Today on Heather's Closet, I am back in my robe. I am still makeup free, but not for long. As most of you know, my glam squad is me. I do my own hair, I do my own makeup, and uh, honestly, it's because over the years, I just, I, I get antsy, like I can't even sit there anymore, and I just want to la la la. So, I'm gonna show you how I do my face. First of all, you can see I have many brushes. I probably use three of them. I'm telling you, I've got like drawers of makeup, colors, lipsticks, but when I travel, I could put all of my makeup in this tiny little bag. You know what? I'll do that for you guys on a separate episode and show you how I condense everything to travel with. But today, I'm just gonna show you basically how I do my face. The way I do my makeup is the same every day. Sometimes I do it very light, sometimes I do it very heavy, but if I'm gonna do makeup, I basically have the same shape eye, the same kinds of colors. My daughter thinks it's super boring. I think it's classic. Um, but if I'm going to a special event, I might add some sparkle. I might add a, like a hint of a different color, but basically it's all the same shape. Console Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. This is how I begin. Now, I've already cleaned and moisturized my face. So now, I take my beauty blender, which I love, and I take my tinted moisturizer, and I do my face. Yes. When you think of a tinted moisturizer, it sounds very light, but this actually has full coverage, and what's great about it is it has volumigen in it. So it's kind of like, it's like smart makeup. Like if your smartphone, this is smart makeup. So it actually volumizes your skin while you're wearing it. Isn't that nice? It's very hydrating, great color. There we go. How quick was that? Nothing, right? But what's nice about it is you don't look like you're wearing makeup. It looks like natural. I read, I think Cindy Crawford once said, the natural look takes a lot of makeup. Ain't that the truth. Okay, then, this one's getting low. I take my Consult Beauty Concealer. Again, it's got volumigen in it. So it's hydrating and plumping and all that. I also, I just love the consistency of it. I love how it covers. I do it around my eyes. I do it around my nose where I have those unfortunate little red capillaries that are broken. And then, you know, you just put it anywhere you need a little extra coverage. Like you got a zit or you have, I don't know, a little sunspot or something. Just put it all around. I've used uh, foam triangles to apply my makeup. I've used a brush. I've used all kinds of things. I just find with the Beauty Blender, it's honestly the fastest. It's fast, it's hydrating. Sometimes with brushes, I feel like you can get stroke marks. Some of those little foam triangles are kind of cheap and they either absorb your makeup so you're using more than you need to, or they, get, they pill and you get little um, pieces of it on your face. I don't like that. I, I like the Beauty Blender. I think it's really good. And I like the black one. It's called the professional one. I don't know if that means the pores are smaller or something on it, but I love the black one. All right, so now I have done my face. Still, it's pretty natural, right? I mean, I could walk around like this. Then I take my brushes. By the way, I'm gonna say this. You should always clean your brushes. I never clean my brushes. It's so bad, but I feel like they're kind of seasoned. Okay, so then I take, I love this. This is Jane Erdale, all right? And this is, again, running out, not good. I take that and I take some Makeup Forever HD powder and I just like put a little bit in there. Do you see that? So I can mix it together. By the way, this puff is disgusting. Just so you know, when you have a puff in your makeup, you don't ever want to put it, the side you touch your face with, you don't want to put that down on the compact because the oils from your skin get in the makeup and it ruins your powder. You don't want to do that. This one's gross, I'm throwing it out. Come on. Anyway, so then you take, I, I take my powder like that and I mix it together and I powder my face. I try to do just the T-zone area, maybe my eyelids, but I like to keep this area powder free just so you get that glow, that J-Lo glow, I like to call it. Then I do a little bronzer. I love this Tom Ford one. It's called Terra, like the earth. And I do my cheeks, my eyes, my jawline. I love contouring, but I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the overly contoured face on me. 
Um, when I see it in pictures and I see celebrities on the red carpet, I think it looks cool, but every time I've tried it myself, I feel like I'm wearing a mask. I think that subtle contouring is so much better. That's why I like the powder, because I think it just, you can layer it to the point where you like it, but it doesn't look so harsh. Right. And then, oh, I love this. I dropped it and broke it though. This is um, from Becca. This is Champagne Pop. This is like a little highlighter. And I like to use that on the cheekbone. It's not crazy shimmery, just a little bit, because you don't want to go out and feel like you're going to Vegas if you're just, you know, going out to dinner or running errands or something or going to a meeting. But I put it on my eyelid, I put it in the corners. Then here's what else I do. Bridge of the nose, right above the top lip, chin, and two spaces on the forehead. It's very youthful. Isn't that nice? Okay, so we did that. Then, blush. Um, this one is Bare Minerals. I can't read what color it is because I don't have my glasses, but it's a nice color. I also like Tom Ford. Chanel makes really nice blushes, but I like something that's like a little subtle. So again, you don't look very streaky. You want kind of a natural glow, like you're happy. Not like, oh, she has blush on. Just so you know, because we're filming this, it might not, the blush might not look as dark. Because when you're on camera, you actually need to wear more makeup than regular life. But I'm showing you really how I do the makeup. So just know, if it looks very light to you in person, you can actually see it. Now is the most important thing. This is now all about the eyes. Do you know that people spend most of their time looking at the upper third of someone's face? It's true. So the eyes are very important. How do I do my eyes? This is Jaclyn Hill's collab palette with Morphe. You wanna see it? So you know what's funny? When I first got it, I looked at it and I was like, well, who's ever wearing those colors? And who's ever wearing, do you know I wear all of them? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to do it. A lot of times when things come into fashion or things are trends, like blue eyeshadow or green eyeshadow, I'll, you know, I'll look at it and be like, that's so cool for a red carpet or you know, some kind of event like that. But in everyday life, how do you take that trend and make it work? So that's what I like to do. That's why I love this palette. First, I start with a lighter color on my lid. There's a lot of really great light colors in here and they have like a little bit of shimmer, but again, not so much that you feel like you're going to a disco. I start there. Then, oh, you know what's so funny? This has become my favorite makeup brush. I bought this at a drugstore in Miami. I got to Miami, we were on our way somewhere, I think Turks and Caicos with the family, and I realized I had forgotten all of my makeup brushes. So I went to the drugstore and I bought all these makeup brushes, and they're fabulous, I love them. Then, for my shaped eyes, I like to do the corner and the crease. So I start with kind of a neutral tones. Kind of, I'm doing bronzes right now. Just to sort of build up the shape of the eye. And I think that when you do it this way, it creates depth. So that's layer one. Then I might consider, hmm, what am I wearing? Well. I think I'm wearing X, Y, or Z, and I wanna add something. So right now, I'm gonna show you the color. I'm gonna add this yellow color, which you, I know you're looking at, you're like, how are you gonna wear the yellow color? Watch, it's actually very, very simple. Okay, can you see that? So I'm lightly layering the yellow just a little inside of the crease color I put. All right, great. You can do that with any of these colors, the greens, the purples, the reds, anything. Then I'm gonna use a darker color to go back to the crease. And over it, same shape. Sometimes I forget which color I was using. That's not good. 
Sometimes I get claustrophobic when people do my makeup. They're too close. Like I can touch my own eyes, I wear contact lenses. Like I'm not squeamish like that at all, but I just don't love when people are in my face like that. Also, I do my makeup so fast that to sit there for so long makes me insane. Okay, so now we got the basic shape of the eye going. I have this color for Bobbi Brown and they don't make it in a single. It was like in a gift pack for the holidays last year and I'm so obsessed with it. But <laughs> I use it as an eyeshadow and I also use it as an eyeliner and I wet it and see how this little circle's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I have anxiety because I don't know what's gonna happen when it's gone. What will I do? Don't know. All right, so I'm just gonna take it up a little notch with this. Because we're filming, my light is very hot on this side, so I might end up uneven. We'll see how it goes. But that's a good point. You know, it's very important to check your makeup in different lighting before you go out. I will tell you why. One year on the Real Housewives of Orange County reunion, I was wearing this blue, really stunning Victoria Beckham dress. Kelly, one of my dear friends, did my hair. It was super straight, really nice. And I did my makeup and I had bought this Tom Ford palette with blue eyeshadow in it. And in the mirror, it was exquisite. It was like navy, it was so beautiful. And we got out to the set and I looked like that chick from the Drew Carey show with the blue eyeshadow, it was so bad. All right, then, okay, here, this is mildly gross, but I have this little Chanel brush. You have to wet it, but I, I'm too lazy to walk two steps over to the sink, so I lick it. And then I put it in that little circle and I wet it. And that is how I create eyeliner. But I'll tell you, it stays on forever. It's so good. All right, now I look bottom heavy, so we gotta do the top. Love, love, love Tom Ford liquid eyeliner. It's insanely good. What's weird is there's two sides to it. There's like this shorter side and this longer side. I never use the shorter side, ever. Eyeliner is something you just have to practice. Some people prefer a pen like this that's already preloaded. Some people like what I was just doing with, you know, a brush and a, and a pot of color. Um, pencils are probably the easiest to use. But, you know, my recommendation about eyeliner is just experiment. But I do think since most people are comfortable holding a pencil, it's probably the way to start. Liquid de definitely takes more practice. Okay, so now I have that. Um, mascara. I love this Chanel mascara. I actually, I have long lower lashes, and so when I put mascara on, my lower lashes, sometimes I get those dots. Do you know what I'm talking about? When your lower lashes touch the bottom of your eye. But I find this one doesn't. If you let it dry, it's really good. And it doesn't run and it's waterproof. All right. Eyebrows. Trish McAvoy, love, love, love. This is natural brunette. It has a little eyebrow pencil on the other side. I don't know if I can do this without my close mirror, but I'm going to try. Let's see if I end up looking like Frida Kahlo. We will see. Eyebrows are so important. I was just looking at pictures of myself from 20 years ago, and my eyebrows are literally one line. And I thought it was just gorgeous. I loved it. I thought I looked H-O-T. And I'm gonna tell you something, I did N-O-T. <laughs> Not good. But when my eyebrows were super thin again recently, I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And my 14 year old daughter told me to get castor oil. I'm like, what is ca castor oil? That's like what they would give their kids a little house on the prairie when they were bad or sick or something. But she got me this, oh here. She got me this organic castor oil and I got it on Amazon and it came with like little brushes and you brush it into your eyebrows. They totally grew, it was like a miracle. Usually I wouldn't be putting on lashes right now, but 
for the purpose of showing you how I do this, I'm gonna pop on some lashes. When I go out at night or to a red carpet event, I like to wear big lashes. I love these from House of Lashes. And I love their glue, because I'm allergic to everything. This glue is insanely good. It works amazingly well, and I'm not allergic to it. So I love these lashes, but today, also from House of Lashes, I'm gonna wear these, because I just think they're a little more subtle, and they'll just give the eye a little pop, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, when you wear the longer lashes, like these, it's really good to trim them. I like to trim them from the inside and cut them on an angle so that they don't poke into your eye. These are actually very short and don't need to be trimmed. Two ways you could put glue on your lashes. You can put it directly on, which I can with this wand, but if you have, um, let's say, duo cement you're using or something like that, what you can do is put it on your hand as a palette put it on your makeup brush, the back of your makeup brush, and then apply it. So that's a really good way to do it evenly. But the House of Lashes has a little applicator brush, so it's super easy just to paint on. Okay, so you wanna bend your lash, blow on it. So you want it to dry a little bit. Lashes is another thing that really takes time to learn. I am so good at doing my lashes now. Terry and I, we were downtown in Manhattan and we overslept, we slept through our alarm and we had to get to an appearance like uptown in 20 minutes. And there was no time for anything, like no shower, nothing. And we literally, I threw on my dress, we got in the car, and I did my whole face and my lashes in the car on the way up down. The one thing you don't want is that separation between the lash and your natural lash line. You want it to lay as close as possible. If you can't get it exactly right, try taking little tweezers and pinching them. That can work too. All right, so you put them on, let them set, and then once we do that, you gotta finish them. You can't just leave them like that. You can still see the glue is drying there, but I wanna show you what I do. So I take my eyeliner and I go back over. There we go. All right. Maybe one more hit of under eye. With my little brush to get the corners perfect. Love that. What I may also do is in case anything, oh, it's almost out. In case anything has dropped below my eye. A little more concealer. Then lips. Wet n Wild 666, a universally good color for everyone and it's super cheap. So what I like to do is line my lips and then color them in. Because I find it makes your lipstick or your gloss just stick. And it also prevents from the unfortunate bleeding that can happen when you're old and you have wrinkles around your mouth. Okay, um, Cuds of Beauty lip glasses coming soon. Uh, so I'm gonna use one of those, but you can use anything. You can use a lipstick, you can use a lip gloss, you could use clear over it. I like this because it's volumizing and plumping. Not a big fan of filler in lips. I just always feel like it looks like, but uh, a little natural plumping is good. And voila, maybe like a little hit powder. What do you think? I hope you guys enjoyed that. And let me know, do you have any hints or tips or suggestions for me, things that I could maybe do better? I would love to hear from you. I always love learning little pearls. Uh, and make sure you tag your friends below and subscribe because we're gonna be doing more giveaways coming soon.